I have got the wrong bike gear on today. I'm going to bake slowly. And then I get to peel the gear off later. Ew. Hello everyone. I'm Slow Rider, this is my whirl. Just a quick Easter Sunday video for you. Nothing to do with Easter, because as we all know, the best bit of Easter is actually just afterwards where they sell the chocolate eggs at half price. Probably still not as cheap as a regular bar of chocolate. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Uh, what do we reckon first? I've got to go and feed my friend's cat, and because of that I'm going to be very low on fuel for tomorrow, so I'm going to go and get some fuel. Um, I've just got to decide what I'm going to do first, because the important junction is coming up. Yeah, to go around there. I'm going to go for fuel first. I've decided that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, the real point of this video um, is to have a discussion, really, a, a, a thinking group, if you like. Beans on Toast, the famed YouTuber. I know it's not worth one's taste, I really do. I, I find it quite amusing a lot of the time. Uh, but he did a short video recently, in which he stopped at a red traffic light and a police car pulled up behind, wanting to chase after someone, seemingly, who had just cut that very same traffic light. The, he had blasted past them. And Beans on Toast, well, okay, he's a YouTuber, he wants a bit of clout, but, all, you know, also, he's had a bit of a run-in with the law before. Um, you know, he, he was going down a 30 mile an hour road that the police said was 20 miles an hour and they pulled him aside to sort of tell him that he was going too fast, even though there were no signs up saying it was 20 mile an hour road. The, the, the point is, there, there's a history there, okay, there's a history. Uh, but I don't think that's impeded his judgment here, I think it's just, this is a, you know, he, well, no saying that, he hasn't deliberately gone out of his way to prevent the police doing anything, it's just, he's stubbornly sticking to the law this particular video and I think that's possibly to make a point doesn't really matter uh, it, it caused a bit of a discussion on this short in the comment section of his shorts video and I thought I'd kind of discuss it here because the, the main reason for stopping and not getting out of the way is that he's got a white stop line ahead of him and a red traffic light and that means the red traffic light with it means you cannot cross that line and there's no sort of exception that I know of for going across that line if there's an emergency service vehicle behind you with its blue lights flashing. There is an instruction to be aware of emergency service vehicles and plan your, you know, consider where they might be going and try and get out of the way if you're safe to do so. But then it also says that you should obey, obey all traffic signs. And I take traffic lights to be traffic signs. I think they're basically the same thing for all intents and purposes. So, yeah, you know. Maximum 120 pounds, I'm not gonna manage it. Twenty-three fourteen. Twenty-three fourteen. that's shocking. Only about 97 pounds left I could have spent there. I mean, whew. Close one. Anyway, fuel got. Now off to feed your friend's cat. Now, the counter argument for you can't go across the white line seems to be, I don't know if anyone agrees with this or not, seems to be that you should obey the instructions of a police officer. Now, I'll grant you, 
if they're directing traffic, the, uh, the Road Traffic Act says that you must obey their instructions. And if you're being pulled over, then the Road Traffic Act says you must stop in a safe place. But I don't think it actually says that if someone's chasing after someone else, you, you must give way to them. It's just a, a should, as far as I'm aware. Like, you should move out of the way for an ambulance, and you should move out of the way for the fire brigade. There, there's no sort of legal requirement to do it, as far as I'm aware. Happy to be told where this information is, if anyone actually knows that, but that appears to be the counter-argument. And on the weight of it, I would say, no, Beans was probably right. I mean, stubborn. Definitely stubborn. But... Yeah, probably right in terms of the law to not go across the white line. Of course, there's a possibility he might be able to manoeuvre his bike in another way that would allow the police car by, but, eh, you know, I, I wasn't there. I don't know. But there's a moral argument. And the moral argument is that we don't actually know what that police car was going to do. Sure, they may have been going to catch up with the person who's just sped through a red light absolutely but they might coincidentally be going somewhere else and that argument reminds me of an occasion where I was on my way home from my friend's house um, I didn't live where I currently do at the time and I didn't even have my full license so I was on my L plates and I was following the flow of traffic and I saw a police car parked up on the other side of the road and I thought ooh Okay, you know, better, best behaviour. And I, I glanced down at my speedo and, well, it wasn't 30. It wasn't far off 30, but it wasn't 30. So I sort of, you know, yeah, slow down a bit as I went past. And then I look in the mirror and he's, I don't know, maybe 200 yards behind me, something like that. Look in the mirror and, yeah, I see these blue lights flash on. I'm like, oh my God. Because naturally, out of the queue of traffic, my mind is thinking that I'm the one they're going to pull over. Don't know why my mind thinks that. Really don't know why my mind thinks that. But it has done. And quite decisively so. So I, you know, obey the speed limit. Oh, secretly hoping this police car is just going to disappear off. Uh, which lane do I want to be in? I'm hedge my bets. So I'm secretly sort of hoping this police car isn't coming straight after me. Keeping my speed deliberately low to, you know, go under the radar, hope that they haven't seen me. Don't take any obvious side cut routes but you know just take my route as it is and you know looking back every so on so, so every sort of 30 seconds or so and yeah I don't see them and they're not following me I'm like oh thank god for that thank god for that it, you know it, clearly it wasn't me that they were after that this is the thought process going in my mind either that or I've managed to lose them somehow which I doubt but yeah that's what's going through in my mind anyway turns out that particular night, Manchester Arena got bombed. Me thinking in my mind, oh my god, they've turned the police lights on for me, was completely wrong. Um, and it was probable that they were go racing they were racing off to Manchester. I didn't actually know that the, the bombing thing had happened. I got home, basically went to bed, woke up the next morning, walked to work because I, I lived that close to work at that point. Didn't need to get on the bike. And as I'm walking to work, phone rings and I look and it's my mum. Why the hell my mum's calling me at 6am? I do not know, so I answer. Oh, you're alive then, she says. Yeah. Yeah, I'm alive. Why, why wouldn't I be alive? What, what's going on? Oh, it's just, you know, with a bum going off at the arena and it's above this rail, Victoria Railway Station. And sometimes you work there, so, you know, I was checking that you hadn't been blown up. Oh, OK. No, I haven't been blown up. The fact that I was walking to work saved me a one-hour conversation. That, that was the only plus out of that one. Um, not when, obviously, I was alive. Anyway, 
So yes, coincidences do happen and it could be that police car was charging off somewhere to make sure that they could fight crime or save someone's life or something. It's entirely possible. Why would it not be entirely possible? Chances are they were chasing after the guy who just gone through a red light. So the moral argument is a much wider one. It doesn't matter what the reason for the police car wanting to get past is. It only matters that they want to come past and as a good citizen, you should let them. There is very definitely an argument that you should get out of the way for the police, absolutely, just like you should for the ambulance and the fire brigade and so on and so forth. So yes, the moral argument has some standing, but then of course there's the counter moral argument and that is you should obey the law. Because this isn't some random stupid law that's there to try and stop you in your freedoms, this is one that's there for safety. You don't cross that line if the traffic light is red. And sure, it might be an oversight that letting a police car through or an ambulance through or a fire engine through isn't on that thing. It isn't an exception for you. That might be an oversight, absolutely, but it isn't there. So the moral argument in this situation hinges on the idea that you would take three points on your license and a £100 fine just to let them through. Just to save them that 30 seconds or however long the traffic lights stay red for. Okay, you're obviously in a hurry. Got you far, didn't it? I think, morally speaking, I would rather stand with the idea that I've obeyed the law. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't try and find a way around that law, or try and find a way to, say, get out of the way of the, the, the uh, vehicles anyway, particularly if I can see this event is about to happen, you know? So, for example, if I'm approaching these traffic lights and I can see that someone's just sped off through the lights and there's a police car here and it wants to charge after them, I'm going to go, do you know what, that police car's going to go. I should probably make space for them. And I might pull up to the left of the lane or the right of the lane to ease movement through, you know. So maybe Beans was being a little bit naughty by positioning himself central in the lane, you know? So he didn't have a very easy way of moving out. Maybe it wasn't even a conscious thought, it's just this is how I always pull up at the lights and, you know, nothing deliberate in it. And it does kind of make me think, what, what would I do in that situation? I, yeah, I think I would probably try and manoeuvre my way without crossing that white line. Try and manoeuvre my way out. Uh, I'd like to think I would have seen that situation approaching and actually got to the side anyway, knowing that the police would move. Of course, there's no guarantee they would move, because sometimes they don't see it. You know, that sort of thing happens. Anyway, curious little video for you. Next week, uh, my Scotland tour videos start. There's going to be several weeks of that. Got this guy to come past so I can move out. Thank you very much. Yeah, next week the Vic Scotland videos start. Uh, I think there's going to be about nine of them, eight or nine of them. Um, so we were up there for quite a few days. 
some lovely roads, some lovely scenery. Anyway, so that's going to start next week. Until then, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Be good humans. Ta-ta for now.